Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 4 vs 4 on Veselovo and in this one I'm going to be using the 6th South African Armoured with the Balanced Deployment type. This is another of the new divisions available in the Tribute to the Liberation of Italy DLC but the game's already underway so let's have a quick look at what we got down. So I've got a few of these Natal Scouts at the front here these come in these white scout cars they have very cool camo and i love their little blue caps there very nice uh, then we've got some bofers following up again the morris c8 has its own new camo which is very cool those are going to be covering uh, my tanks to the further back i've also got a couple of these motorized rifles that are coming in with the m3a1 half track and the m1 m3a1 half track is really nice because it has a 50 cal on it uh, then further back we have a little bit of a traffic jam two Sherman Shermans here we've got one Sherman 5 uh, one Sherman 1B and then we've got two Firefly 5Cs now these Firefly 5Cs uh, they are going to be moving up into the light cover here where I can manage the engagement against enemy armor and then I'm going to have the Sherman 1B be there to help against any infantry in the open and, and sort of support weapons at range and then I've got the Sherman 5 command uh, that is going to be obviously giving these extra veterancy, not necessarily there to engage. Then I've got the motorized rifles. Uh, these come with Piat, so in this sort of close range engagement, if any armor actually pushes us, us aggressively, I will be able to pop them with the Piat, which is the plan. Uh, but Sturm Source here going to be bringing in the IL-2 early on, giving us some information on the left hand side. And we'll see that there is a Panther that I already briefly spotted. Uh, we're going to be up against the 5th SS Viking on this left hand side. He's also brought up a Panther D and a Panther A onto this hill where Sturm Source is facing him off with an IS-2 currently. Uh, we're also up against um, the Panzerleer here, the Bur Burdened Warrior. He is slightly to the right of Gull. Either way, let's focus on this engagement. So, I've unloaded the motorized rifles. I spotted briefly a couple of infantry in here. So what I'm going to need to do is have the motorized rifles engage the enemy infantry and then we can use the 50 cows to back them up and pin them down. Also the Shermans managed to get line of sight in there so we're going to be able to use that to pin them down as well. And that initial hit is great because it's going to make sure that the MG42 doesn't do too much damage. All the while I'm trying to get these fireflies up aggressively towards the panther. And we do have to kind of keep an eye out on the right hand side here because... Obviously, these Panthers do have 2,000 meter range, and this is a very open map. Like, Veselovo really isn't a map that I show very often, same as Autobahn Zohola, which I showed uh, previously. But, yeah, thanks to the reminder from Sturm, I do move up my Sherman 5. Uh, keeping the high veterancy on these Fireflies is super important for making sure you land the first shot. And at maximum veterancy, you're going to be hitting, like, 69% accuracy at maximum range maybe just less than that like 60 something um, with three star vet and making sure you have that extra veterancy or accuracy sorry is super super important uh, the panther d's also would have the same sort of accuracy but depending on their vet like this panther d only has 40 percent accuracy at maximum range because you can see it there on the card and he has no veterancy at the moment still gonna one shot my white sh my white scout card though <laughs> At the moment, I'm pushing hard with the M3A1s straight into the Panzergrens. I don't think he knew that I'd unloaded the infantry yet from those M3A1s, so he retreated his Panther, expecting me to unload straight into my Firefly trap. We managed to get both shots off there without taking a single hit ourselves, so both my Fireflies still happily full health, which is great. BF-109 coming in to take care of Sturm Source's IL-2 and there's also a Focke Wolf hanging about. I'm going to bring in my Spitfire Mark 9. It has the really cool South African markings on it. I've also got the double Bofors over here. Uh, do manage to take out the Greeler at range with the uh, Fireflies that was on the left side. And now my Fireflies are going to be engaging these Panthers. Unfortunately they can't both hit the same target. So I'm forced to kind of fall them back. The IS-2 of Sturm is going to engage here, but this Panther D is still shooting at my Firefly. I was really lucky that shot didn't land. He probably had like 60-70% accuracy at that point. So yeah, the Firefly not getting hit, you know, quite important. Because both of them have taken a hit from the Panther, but because the Panther has like 8 damage and not 
10 damage, the fireflies are still alive. Medium tanks like these fireflies have 10, da 10 health. So they can take two shots from a panther. M3A1s, they did move up and surrender the infantry that was uh, retreating from the light cover. So that was really good. I'm just kind of pressing forwards to see how far I can get and kind of spot what we're up against. Obviously the IL-2 is still floating around, so that's giving us information. I'm keeping my Spitfire here, doing circles so that if any enemy aircraft come in to intercept this IL-2, we're already in position to take it out. Firefly going to take a shot at the Panther A. IS-2 at closer range though. Nice one shot there. IS-2 damage is 12. Can one shot both uh, sort of medium tanks and heavy tanks. Heavy tanks have 12 health, so IS-2 can take them out very easily. Uh, but my fireflies, they're pretty good here. Like, as long as I can engage from light cover, I can probably manage the engagement quite well against the Panther Ds because I'll get the first shot off and then I'll be able to retreat. Only issue is if Gull has some sort of recon here that will be able to spot the fireflies uh, as I'm engaging, in which case the Panther D will match the aim time of the firefly and then you're in trouble because it's more of a 50-50 than a uh, straight up win. So another Sherman 5 coming in. I had to bring in a second one because this Sherman 5 was having trouble covering both of them when they're in different cover. So I basically brought in the Sherman 5 so I could put one Sherman 5 in the top brush and one in the bottom here and then we'd be okay. So so far it's uh, 13 to 11. The offensive flag on this side we managed to catch early on because of the kill onto the panther so that's given us a really strong position here and the rest of Gull's forces were over on this hill so he didn't really have extra to cover this off I was quite concentrated here compared to him where he's a bit more spread so that's why we were probably getting the better of him for the time being I've had to push the bofors up keeping them close is very important I did overextend past these early on, and if the opponents had any sort of uh, JU-87s or something with cluster munitions, I could have lost a lot of my aircraft, but thankfully, I didn't. Uh, Sherman 1B is going to be engaging these Panzergrens in the open, but the Panther D rolling up here is not ideal for us. However, do still have the two Fireflies. I'm going to turn off their HE so they don't waste it on infantry, or like waste their, their hidden uh, status on infantry, but... He is moving forwards the half track, so I'm just going to sit here and make sure I kill those, and then I'll back off into cover, and then I'll move forwards and engage the Panthers afterwards. Now these Panzerguns are getting close enough anyway that if I was to move to the edge of cover, that the Fireflies well, would get spotted anyway. But this Sherman's going to take a clean hit from the Panther D at range, which is again a 40% accurate hit, so nicely done there. Sherman 1B is going to back off out of range uh, so that it can't be hit again. Now's the time to push back forwards though, as I have brought up my own commander over here. Initially, Stemsource did bring this one up, but it was out of range of my command on, the, on my side. So I decided to bring up my own that I could put into this cover. And then I can make the Fireflies a three-star veterancy because I do have them coming in at one-star vet. I need to make sure that these engage the Panther at the same time. Like ideally, I would have had it so both of them fired at the same time. But one of them fired first. I'm going to let it fire the second shot. Managed to get the kill. That was very successful. A Focke Wolf 190D9 comes in with a bit of a strafing run there. That was perfectly fine for me. Uh, it could have been worse. If this was a if this was a fighter bomber, either of these could have died. Maybe both. Because they're damaged. As you can see, if I zoom in now, the camo on them is not great. Um, you can see how damaged they are just by zooming in and look at the skin there. So yeah, and a two, a two damage is not hard to come by with just a fighter bomber with even 50 kilogram bombs might have done the job. So yeah, I was really lucky that that wasn't the case, but Focke Wolf 190D9 coming in really fast there, super fast fighter. So now it's just a matter of uh, making sure I have all the recon I need to continue these long range engagements. So bringing in more of these Natal scouts. I've got this one here that's kind of watching over the river. Look at that. It's a beautiful view, isn't it? Just chilling. And then I've got this one on the far left side that's like right at the edge of the map. Uh, so kind of in like a very unlikely place where they would look. Meanwhile, the Sherman 1B is just going to be smashing the Panzergrens in the open. With the Panther down, uh, my Shermans are just free to smash these all day long. And you can see the Sherman has taken some damage 
Uh, the other one is here. <laughs> I lost it in its with its camo. Gonna be firing away. You can see the South African markings again on these. Very cool. Yeah, just quite simply holding the left hand side for the time being. Trying to move up the Natal Scout to find some more things to shoot at, but the Panther over there is going to see it and get the one-shot kill, so goodbye to those guys. Uh, Stamsaw is going to supplement me with an IS-2, which is going to be nice, but I've decided to supplement him with some Firefly 5Cs. So since I'm holding this flag, and it's very unlikely I'm going to get to this flag since it's so close to the spawn, probably best off that we try and go for this flag, and if I can continue to control the ranged engagements with the Firefly, then we should be able to make that work. I'm just going to have to be very careful going over this ridge, make sure I engage at like long range, and we should be absolutely fine. So I'm bringing in another uh, Natal Scout, which is going to be able to sort of run across the open, whilst these Fireflies use the veterancy from the Commander to kill off the Grill, uh, the Griller and the um, Panther D here. Also killed a Panzer IV, which was sitting in the edge of cover over here. We managed to see that because of the... Uh, Recon that I have in position. Uh, this one is uh, slowly running up the far left side of the map, so just trying to sneak that up as far as I can so we get eyes early on whatever's coming our way. Gonna bring up a couple of rifles as well to accompany these fireflies. Uh, they are basically there to run across the open and get shot at so that my fireflies can find their targets. I also brought in a 17 pounder so that I could hide it in this cover with the doso and that could engage uh, the panthers when the fireflies have to fall back because I can't just sit there and have an open range engagement with the panthers at range because technically the panthers are better. So I need to be really kind of careful with how, how I manage the engagement just kind of like fire one shot and fall back not let the Panthers get their extra accuracy by firing multiple times because otherwise I'm going to lose. Uh, the Natal Scouts there you can see got popped one shot by the Grilla. That's likely because there was recon or some form of infantry here that spotted them moving forwards and so I was aware of that from now on. Otherwise the Natal Scout should have been absolutely fine to sit out in the open because they do have the exceptional stealth. I've also decided to bring up a 17 pounder on the left hand side that can sit in this light cover now this light haver has really nice uh, line of sight onto the back side of this hill and also toward the town. So I'm able to pretty much push these the panther and the gula out of position. Uh, smoke water does come down, that's from this mortar. I had this one mortar in to provide smoke. And I'm doing it there just in case the panther gets line of sight as I'm bringing it in. So yeah, good tip actually. You can see here when I hover over the 17 pounder it says I can't see the panther but when I hover over the panther it says it almost can see the 17 pounder. Really important to check both when you're managing sort of engagements like this because otherwise you can really get yourself caught out when it looks like from your point of view that you can't hit them so they can't hit you but if you look at it from their point of view they definitely can. The 17 pounder going to sneak through the smoke get a shot towards the panther. First shot misses. But the nice thing about the 17 pound, it's got pretty decent base accuracy. So every shot is getting much more accurate. And the Panther D is going to go down there. IS-2 on the left. Does manage to get away with its engagement with the Panther D. This two star Panther D is actually pretty scary for an IS-2 because the IS-2 uh, doesn't really have the rate of fire to match up. So Panther D has 6 round per minute rate of fire and the IS-2 has 3 round per minute rate of fire. So the Panther D going to get the gun jam there on the left hand side which uh, is going to pretty much put that IS-2 out of commission until Sturmsauce brings up his supply. Right, meanwhile I'm making my move on the hill. So my South Africans trying to run forwards getting mowed down by machine gun fire from the house. It's just like real life running towards the house and all of a sudden machine gun fire out of the windows and all your men pinned down in in the open so the fireflies trying to help out best they can with that engagement but this is exactly what I wanted these rifles to do is be, advance onto contact <laughs> people always laugh about it 
as it's a real big habit of mine, but getting a couple of cheap infantry to run forwards towards a point is a real easy way of revealing what's there. So I don't mind sacrificing a few men to get that information. My 17 pounder is going to go down on the left-hand side here. I believe the Grilla took that out. Or something did. Actually, no, it was the MG. That's what it was. Yeah. Now, the Firefly ended up engaging the Panther D here, a Burden Warrior. Uh, sort of 1v1, which really isn't what you want to do. I want to be 2v1ing these Panthers as much as possible with the high veterancy. So Storm Source has got a KV-1S, he's got this IS-2, and now I'm going to try to line up the push forwards here so both of these can engage at the same time. Unfortunately, the first one manages to shoot um, first and doesn't get line of sight. And after that penetration, Burden falls back. So nice play there to get out of the way because if he'd 2v1, that would have been in a bad spot. But then, Gull comes up with an AT ambush on the left side. Two pack 40s have arrived, plus the Grilla. And this pack 40 with its high rate of fire can absolutely demolish fireflies at range. My firefly does manage to get a really clutch shot into the Grilla. But now these two pack 40s are going to cause issues with Sturm Source as well, as the KV-1S very vulnerable to these AT guns. So I do lose both of my fireflies in the open, and this was a great move by Gull to try and clean out some of this armor. He can't really do much to the IS-2. The IS-2 can face tank this all day and just kill the pack 40s so now would be the time for him to run them back. Uh, but he's done the job killing the medium armor, which is you know exactly what he wanted to do. So I have also brought up the Sherman 2. It's not really going to see much action in this game. Uh, the main reason I brought this was to engage Panzer 4s and sort of medium armor that we'd be up against, whereas the Fireflies are pretty much required if I'm going to kill Panthers at range. Now this was cool. Finally brought up these M10 Grouse. These are really awesome because they can fire indirectly and they have radios. So I was sort of talking about it on my stream while I was playing and <laughs> Sturm ping, uh, pinged that I had a radio here. But what I was talking about at the time was I needed a radio that could move up in the open. and. This is an armoured vehicle, so it's going to get killed very easy by the Pack 40 or any Panther that pops out. So I can't really use that. I would have to use like a Recon Infantry, which had a radio, or something like this, the Artillery Command, which could kind of be relatively well hidden and pretty resilient in the open. Unless obviously a Grilla shoots it in the face. Uh, but yeah, regardless, that was what I wanted to put up here. But I did, have, of course, have the White Scout cars. So what I'm going to do is do my best to sneak this up. On the left hand side and take it over this rough terrain we're going to move it up as far as i can put it in a position where these sort of bumps in the hill cover it off against anything that's going to shoot it from this town I, nice is2 kill there onto the uh, panther and this is2 still doing a good job against the pack 40. so yeah m10s indirect fire very cool these are aiming and they aim pretty quick they're very uh, sort of similar to SU-76s. You see the one back there as well that is firing away. But yeah, they aim very fast and they have pretty tight sort of accuracy. Just took out the Pack 40 there. I'm going to try and take out the next one. Since the Pack, sorry, the IS-2 did go down here, the Pack 40 managed to get close and I assume an, a couple of APCR shells took that out. I've also brought up a white scout car on the right hand side uh, that is going to provide ver uh, sorry, radio over here. So this one's providing it, let's see, it's like up to this line. So this line here, this little curve is where the white scout car is helping. Obviously the artillery command is this curve here. And then I've got this uh, white scout car which is this part here and I'm going to try and sneak that up through the light cover eventually once I remember it's there and uh, that's going to give us radio across a lot of this high ground so we can take care of things like those pack 40s very quickly in the future and also I can uh, target the buildings up here which is quite important so I'm purposefully targeting the windmill I can't really see what's even in the windmill right now ha like the only thing that we've seen is Panzergrenz in this building. But I'm targeting the windmill specifically so that we can destroy these buildings. And without the windmill there, the 
recon that's in it won't get an elevation bonus, so it won't be able to spot everything around the hill as well as on it. And potentially, if I shoot at the windmill, I can kill whatever's in it. So, yeah, that was important as well. IS-2 here. Going to be getting on target with the pack 40. Knocking that out. Lovely kill. And now my M10 is going to be targeting the MG42. I had to keep moving these forwards and backwards because I was taking counter battery throughout the game. And Nico Lucilecki is going to be arriving on the left hand side, the ace panther of the uh, 5th SS. Scary boy, but aces in this game are cosmetic. <laughs> they don't actually increase the power of a unit. That being said, um, in this case, <laughs> There may be some bias. You'll see in a minute. M10 are going to continue their engagement against the MG42. As I mentioned before, very similar to SU-76s uh, with their radio uh, capabilities. So my rifles have managed to move up now. And with the artillery and bombing strikes onto this compound, uh, we're able to take the flag in the open. So we're currently pushing 17 to 6, like on the right-hand side. Uh, Mickey and uh, Glorious Dude were doing a really nice job of pushing up here. You see his Tetrarchs are getting really deep into enemy lines. But, as I was saying, Nico Lucilek, cosmetic only, still manages to one-shot both of my Fireflies. <laughs> now, these were both damaged, but my Fireflies both missed and he hit both shots, which was unfortunate, to say the least. Because now... I don't really have anything to stop his armor moving forward. Storm Source does have his uh, IS-2 here. I do have my 17-pounder in position in this light cover again. Uh, but, yeah, this is still scary. And these poor Natal scouts going to get spotted uh, with the infantry moving up. They do get seen in the open here. And with the Stugs firing at them, the last guy is going to be running away from those armored vehicles. And the last shot's going to come in there, and he's going to go down. Poor dude. Sherman's had to back off. I would have liked to have them continue to attack the infantry that was pushing forwards, but I just couldn't do that. And, yeah, it's just a matter of the 17-pounder shifting over to the left as far as it can, ready to pounce across the river. I really like the gun shield camo on this. Like, all of the South African units look really, really nice. So that's going to fire away. We're going to hit the Stug. Smack bang in the side armor. IS-2 is going to move forwards with two star veterancy. Take out Nico Lucy Leg. Gets revenge for my fireflies. And the 17 pounder misses the second shot, which is unusual. And then the uh, the third shot's going to clean that up. So just before it got out of line of sight, which was good. I don't have line of sight on this stuck because of this light cover. And the 17 pounder is going to quickly come under fire from enemy artillery uh, since it got that kill. But the thing is with these 17 pounders, the nice thing about them is they have like really good um, sort of long range capability and high penetration and it allows them to kill quite valuable stuff. So this is like 85 points and the 17 pounder, if I can click on it <laughs> at some point, I think it's like 60 points. So you know, it's already paid itself off by getting that kill. IST is going to clean up the other Stug. That's going to allow my Shermans to move back up. And I've also got two new Fireflies on the way. Although these are Firefly 1s instead of Firefly 5s because I didn't have any of those left. And we are already into Phase C. Um, M10s, they are currently trying to counter battery an 81mm mortar that I saw back here. And it wasn't radio range, so I just went for that. But I'm also going to be trying to RT the 20mm and the verbal wind eventually as well. Although, in the South African deck that I use, I don't really have any aircraft. I have like a couple of bombers and a few fighters, but that's about it. Um, it's mainly just a lot of fireflies and the M10s. And I really like these. I think they're really fun to use. Because not only are they good at engaging at range, uh, they can also use the AP shells which still have the 130 mils of penetration at 1750 meter range with the 45% accuracy so yeah super super strong uh, Stamsos going to be firing away with the Andrusha uh, looking for the verbal wind kill there my rifles were the ones spotting these here but the verbal wind couldn't see my rifles because there probably wasn't any recon 
So I'm able to just kind of like move forwards, just confirm any kills that the Andorusha gets. I'm going to stop them out in the open there, as you can see. Andorusha is going to hit both the 20 mil and the Verbalvind. Nice kills from Sturm Source. My M10s were also firing at the 20 mil, but as soon as I saw that die, we're going to change the targets to these Panzer Grenadiers with Panzer Shreks. Now these Panzer Grenadiers with Panzer Shreks are the new uh, variant of Panzer Grenadiers that you can get with the Panzer Lear only. And they all come in half tracks. Um, pretty awesome in light cover. But yeah, these rifles now getting beat on pretty hard uh, with the help of those that Panzer IV and the Panzer Shrek shooting up from the light cover. This rifle unit, I probably shouldn't have let that be hit by the Panzer Grenz here, but I believe it was just in line of sight through the cover. So it was cutting under fire from those. And also, obviously, artillery coming in as well. I uh, wasn't very helpful and I assume they had radio because the accuracy there was pretty spot on. And the Rish are just going to fire a couple of rockets over to the left side and onto the town. Uh, that was actually firing at uh, this commander that I managed to knock out. My firefly moved forwards, pipped that at long range. I was really happy to get rid of that because it removes a lot of the veterancy from his Panthers and then I'm going to be much more likely to win the ranged engagements from that point forwards. But yeah, 16 to 8. Uh, Glorious did get pushed back, like a lot of his push up here got annihilated, but it wasn't enough. We've managed to capture this flag, we've managed to capture this flag. My rifle's currently just chilling behind the building here under artillery fire. Uh, we managed to briefly push and capture these two flags and that flag on the right hand side, so that's giving us this big lead the whole way across and it was interesting because usually you see like axes do really well at range but because of the amount of fireflies i i had and i could bring in that never felt like it was the case and that's one thing that's really nice about the sixth south african is they can stand up to a lot of these axis armored divisions due to the sheer amount of fireflies that they have the only issue you're going to have is if you go up against something like king tigers right that's going to be the main crux of this division, like it is with most divisions. 16th Panzer, 21st Panzer, both divisions that are going to be tough to deal with. But the nice thing about Fireflies is they're not that expensive and they can very easily penetrate the side armor of a King Tiger. So just got to get your placement right, find those side shots and you should be okay. Also, these M10s, since they can acquire targets pretty fast, like the SG-76s, could be a really nice way to take out a King Tiger as well. As long as you had radio, which you have plenty of. Like my artillery command is obviously providing radio. I've got loads of these Sherman 5s that also provide radio. Uh, the white scout cars providing radio. This one snuck up even more now, as you can see. Providing radio even further back uh, for these M10s. That's even allowing me to hit this Pack 40 that's on the back side of this hill. So I'm going to be engaging that. But after 27 minutes and 34 seconds... The game's going to come to an end with a minor victory, which was really nice. Uh, so yeah, in the end, uh, 1,335 kills to 795 losses. Uh, Sturmsaw's picking up a lot of those uh, Panther kills with his IS-2s, and also the um, Andrusha picking up a lot of the kills as well there. So nice job. Glorious dude, fantastic job with the sick there, born on the right-hand side, and uh, Mickey did a nice job with the Task Force 45 as well. So pretty, um, well, pretty one-sided match, really. But I thought this was... A great game for showing off the South Africans and really uh, what they can do and, and how they work. Um, the Fireflies keeping high veterancy on these, super important for these long range tank engagements. Uh, your infantry is just there as fodder for the most part. Keeping the, the veterancy on the Fireflies is, is the most important part. Having the Shermans to support them is also important, especially when you bump into things like uh, those pack 40s unfortunately i'd had the shermans both deployed on the left rather than on the hill so that's why the pack 40s got the better of us and i didn't have any of these m10s in early so yeah that would have been another way that i could have either smoked off my own units or killed the pack 40s quickly um, but the fastest thing to do with, with the m10s probably would have been to just rt the enemy because i don't think they get smoke um smoke would have been useful from my mortar so yeah Anyway, uh, 17 pounders, super, super strong as well. They're great for positions where you want to either hide in cover, like the light cover or in heavy cover. And they can also be useful when you want to engage tanks from range, just like Gull used his pack 40s at range uh, in the open to engage the fireflies. 
You can do the same with a 17 pounder as long as it's not, you know, King Tiger. Like the pack 40 doesn't want to kill an IS2, it wants to kill all of our medium armor, and that's exactly what it did. And that's what I lost these two fireflies to. Also, Nico Lucy Leg there <laughs> getting the two firefly kills was a bit unfortunate, but they were both damaged already, and uh, the Panther managed to hit both of those shots. I did lose a couple of these Natal Scouts on necessarily like both of those died in their transports so that could have been avoided but yeah otherwise not too bad fun, fun little game hopefully you guys enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye